Welcome to Soulful Conversations with Najeda. Hi, I'm Najeda Chapoto. I am the host of Soulful Conversations with Najeda. I am an empowerment and confidence coach, spiritual teacher, speaker, and author. I love to dance. This was actually, I'm Haitian American. This song was from uh, Haitian artist Jay Perry. It was called Kia Suye. I So aside from dancing, I'm also passionate about spiritual growth, um, specifically, I, you know, spirituality in politics, social justice. I'm also passionate about empowering women and children in my homeland, Haiti, and other minority groups. I'm very much passionate about empowering women around the world and using their voice speaking their truth and making the impact they were born to make, being their authentic self. As a coach, I help ambitious and purpose-driven women um, find their voice through using it because you can't find your voice if you don't use it. And I also help them reconnect with themselves, uncover their mission and vision, and define their core values in order for them to make the impact they were born to make and doing work that they love that lights them up and being their authentic self. I am really excited about my guest today, Teresa Prostocki. I said it right, right? <laughs> you did. <laughs> Great. Thank you for joining me, Teresa. So, so Teresa is a mama of two toddlers, fitness enthusiast. I can tell. I often, I enjoy your posts on Facebook, uh, really inspiring. Serenity Seeker and founder and CEO of CNP Wellness Consultants. She's an experienced speaker, coach, and consultant. Teresa, as I'm sorry, an experienced speaker, coach, and consultant. Teresa is on a mission to create thriving communities in the workspace, in the workplace. She is a board certified public health professional, coach. I'm sorry, well, sorry, I got that. A certified well coaches health professional. Well, no, sorry, you know what? Let me just start again, sorry. She's a board certified public health professional, a certified well coaches health and wellness coach, and holds her master's in public health, lending, her, lending to her proficiency in creating cultures of well-being driving behavior change. I really love, I love what she does. Thank you for joining me today, Teresa. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited about today. Yes, definitely. So tell me, uh, let, share with us, how did you get on this path that you are on right now? Yeah, so um, I've always been into wellness. Um, when I was I mean, just little, I remember, you know, being, um, very into like health education and health promotion. And, um, and then in my twenties, I started, um, really becoming passionate about childhood obesity. And I did some interning with a few groups and, uh, ended up working with a local hospital working. It's, it's called fit to kids, uh, or fit for kids and working on tackling childhood obesity. And then in my 30s, uh, so I worked in a wellness you know, uh, capacity all throughout my 20s. And then in my 30s, early 30s, I lost my grandmother, who I was very close with, uh, mm -hmm. to um, Lewy Body, which is a very, um, a very intense form of dementia. And after that, I decided I was pregnant, you know, and I was like, what am I doing? And um, I was working with, uh, as a health educator at that time. And I said, you know, I really want to start doing more. I really want to tackle this issue head on. So I started doing health and wellness coaching specifically with, um, with women. And I was doing it with groups. I was doing it with individuals. And then uh, that kind of morphed in a couple of years ago into consulting with companies. I knew that I wanted to have, I wanted to reach more people. And so um, that's, a, that's how I kind of came into the corporate wellness sector. So that's, you know, that's the thing, actually, this is, this kind of piggybacks to my next question, because I was going to say, how did you decide that you wanted to work in the corporate world? You know, yeah. and like I said, so you, what you would say is that you would be able to reach more people. Yeah. So basically what happened was as I had my own business, the, just doing the health and wellness coaching, mm -hmm. um, 
and I was approached by Florida Blue and they had these they wanted me as a speaker. So they wanted to hire me on as a speaker to speak about specific things in corporate well-being. So I had never done corporate well-being before, um, but I've done wellness all my life. And so they hired me on to do, you know, topics anywhere from, uh, you know, physical fitness to nutrition, sleep, stress, resiliency, performance, energy management, all this, all these different kind of, kind of topics. And so I got introduced to really going out to companies and speaking about wellness and well-being to companies. So it was like a larger scale and I was still doing my coaching business. And then from there, I, you know, I pitched a company and was able to start working um, with them and I have them still as a client today. So yeah, that's how it kind of, it kind of fell in, you know, the universe has your back sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. No, totally. That is so exciting. So tell me, um, what has been your experience working with corporate? So I think corporate wellness in itself is, it's new and it's not. So, you know, corporate health, I mean, if you really think about it, it goes back to like the 1800s, late 1800s, there used to be like athletic teams and things like that, you know, so that's part of wellness. Um, and then, you know, we saw like in the 1980s that there was like smoking bans and um, Boeing, you know, instituted, you can't smoke anymore here. And, um, and then people really started realizing, wait a minute, like organizations started realizing, wait a minute, like the, instead of just, are you sick or not, you know, are you missing work or are you not, not missing work? Are you here? That They started realizing we really need to talk about how do our employees feel so it's not just about, you know, uh, that employee has, he's out today, that's it, you know, end of story, or she's out today. Um, it really has to do with, well, why is she out? Why is he out? You know, what's going on behind the scenes and really seeing this person as a whole person. And so the wellness field in corporate wellness specifically has really been evolving. And it's at the point now where we're entering this new this new, your, the tagline is now well-being. So it's really focusing on the person as a whole person and not just, you know, physical wellness, which I think it's been stuck in for a while. Totally. And actually, you and I had a conversation recently, and that's one of the things, like, remember I was asking you about how, you know, when I was in the corporate world, I would see, like, you know, people are not staying in their regular jobs. Like this whole idea before where after college, you would go to a job and you would be there for 25 years and you retire there. You don't see that anymore. People are like, when you get to a workplace now, it's like, what what was it the minimum we had said? Like, I mean, the average is like three years. Two to three years, yeah. Yeah. You know, like if you're here, if somebody's been there for five years or 10 years, you're like, wow, you know? Yeah. I was talking about how people don't get promoted people are not being promoted and people really like it's sort of like in order to be promoted you need to leave and work for another company and you actually told me that is part of what you do that's well-being that's wellness and sometimes when we hear wellness we're only thinking about like fitness you know nutrition you know um because actually not that long ago i was asking somebody if this hospital in miami you know, do they, you know, hire coaches? And she was like, yeah, they do, but wellness coaches. And right away I was thinking, okay, uh, like health stuff, you know, so totally. So tell me now, um, I know you wanted to talk about um, inclusion and diversity in the workplace. That is part of, is that part of wellness as well? I think we talked about it, but I can't really recall the last time. Yeah, so... So you brought up a good point about like the employees leaving and that type of thing. And so what we are seeing is that just going back to that for a minute is that employee well-being is absolutely tied to organizational health and it includes so much more, right? So it's not just about like biometric screenings or cholesterol and diabetes. It has Mm -hmm. that aspect, but we know we're more than our physical selves. So really what we're seeing is that Employee wellness has to do with retention. It has to do with recruitment. It has to do with um, innovation, creativity. It has all these different aspects. And absolutely, I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I was intrigued by you and I, of course, uh, you know, we follow each other on Facebook, but, um, and what you say is that, um, 
you help women specifically, but you help them find their voice. You help them make that impact and you help them with their core values. That is so much about wellness and well being. And, you know, at the time that we were talking uh, before and we reached out to each other, it was really about you were using your voice in a specific um, place. And you were really talking about culture and you were talking about um, cultural compensation. Uh, com- competency. And so that's how this conversation about diversity and inclusion really got into it because we know that diversity and inclusion is a lot more than just race or ethnicity, right? It includes um, all kinds of human aspects. I mean, race, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, um, Mm -hmm. sexual orientation, age, social class, uh, physical abilities, value system. I mean, a lot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But what we, what you were talking about, you know, in your, in those posts that you had really intrigued me because you're talking about cultural values. You're talking about these norms and traditions. And the biggest reason that I was kind of drawn to it and wanted to talk about it in, is wellness and well-being in the workplace because mm-hmm. it is about giving employees their voice. So you're ta- you want to give women specifically their voice, but I want to give employees a voice, right? Yeah. So I want to say, you know, how can we really, does diversity and inclusion need to even be a conversation in, well, in the wellness sphere? And um, it was actually kind of funny. I put it, I, I wanted to read a couple of the Facebook. So I put this out to a Facebook group that I have. That's a wellness Facebook group. And I also put it out on my LinkedIn. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm doing this podcast. And what do you wellness professionals think about having um, a talk about specifically wellness and diversity and inclusion. And I got some interesting feedback. So I don't know if you, are you okay with me saying? Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Okay. So one of them said, um, I think the beauty of health and well-being is that it doesn't matter your race, religion, social economic status, or gender, et cetera. And I agree with that. What do you think of that? Um, well, when they say it doesn't matter, can you, like, what would you say that means? Like, it, like that we're all the same? Is that... I don't know. So, so this is, I wanted to like pose some of these to you because I think having a voice, right? So this was coming from, I I can't remember, but I I think she was a woman. It was a woman who wrote that part. But I think where she was going with that um, was that basically like it's non-discriminatory. Okay. So health and well-being is non-discriminatory. But then I also had another comment that said diversity likes to box us into titles. So that was intriguing. And then I had another one that said... um, I would never specifically have a targeted initiative based on a subcategory of the population based on culture and race. So basically from what I got from that, it was um, that you don't want to just make a wellness program just for one group of people. Um, And then um, this last one I, I thought was really, really intriguing and really telling was to suggest you need an inclusivity inclusivity program suggests that the culture is not inclusive actually you know what well you know it's so interesting we're talking about this today too because i actually um i i attended a training well it was more like it was a webinar very it was about an hour yesterday on on um unpacking white supremacy in the workplace in organizations oh yeah Yes. <laughs> wow. So give me some feedback. I would love and to hear about one of the it. Things they were saying is that how, you know, inclusion, you know, actually, I was actually hearing the word, you know, the person I was that led it, one of the people, it was a white woman and a black woman. I can't remember what white woman's name because I follow the, the black woman. I know. wish you would have, you should have given me the link. You I could know, have actually, it with you. <laughs> I, you know, I actually thought about time. I shared it. The thing is that, I saw it like probably like two weeks ago. Yeah. And at first it was like, well, does it concern me? I'm not in corporate anymore. But although, as you know, I'm exploring yeah. uh, corporate uh, in my business. So I was like, you know what? Let me just jump on here. I'll start getting some things. And I actually thought about, and then I, so I registered for it like probably like a week ago, but I shared it on Facebook the day before. And I thought, I was like, do, I thought about maybe, te- maybe tagging you on the post, telling you, under the, you know, in the comment yeah. to check it out. But then I totally forgot. 
Well, but next time do it. <laughs> I know next time I will. So one of the things they were saying is that they were, you know, one of the things that they said is that inclusion and diversity is not the same. Oh yeah. Inclusion, I, which absolutely. is that one of the things they were saying is that inclusion needs to, um, it's actually, that's what they need to be talking about. Mm. And inclusion is actually having, you know, people of color, like everybody has a voice and not just people of color, but like you said, because inclusion is not just about race. It's also about gender, you know, gender orientation and all of that. Like it goes like along. And you know what, there was something that you said, what was the last comment you, you got, you read that I wanted to share something based on one of the things I got yesterday. So the last one, um, and this was from LinkedIn. So a person on LinkedIn had replied back to me and said to suggest that you need like an inclusive inclusivity program suggests that you, that the culture is not inclusive. So that is the thing. What she was saying is that what needs to shift is the organization's culture. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because a one. lot of times, a lot of times, you know, people think, and that's where she's also saying that diversity, because she gave us something and I was like, oh my God, this is, I never, she said diversity is when, for example, as a black woman, you know, she's a black woman like me, we get invited to the party or to whatever. Okay. Inclusion is you ask me to bring my food, bring my music, like what type of music I want to, you know, I, or in, you're including me. So I'm not just there. Yeah. Like you're inviting me, but you're actually interested in what I have to say and what I'm going to enjoy and what I can bring into the table. Yeah. No, that may, I mean, yeah. When so, you talk about inclusion, it's really about involving. It's about empowering. It's about dignity, inherent worth. It's a, it's about recognizing a person for all of their talents, their beliefs, their backgrounds, their way of living. Absolutely. Totally. And the thing is that what I was going to ask you is also, we, you know, w the people that are answering, you know, what are their race? What are their gender orientation? Because all of that also will give us the, you know, to know, okay, oh, okay, well, maybe this, if it's mostly white people, or if it's like all blacks or all Latinos or whatever, because it's so, yeah, <laughs> it's so broad, but Absolutely. totally. Yeah. I, did, I did not write down that part. Yeah. So I just wrote, yeah, I just went yes, through totally. it. No, no, no. But I was just saying, because that is the thing it, and you know, it's so weird because I was telling one of my friends an experience that I had. And actually, you know what? I was like, am I going to share this here? Like <laughs> experience I had, but I was like, since we're talking about it, yeah. because actually as I was listening to this web, you know, to this training yesterday, it made me go back to corporate, my corporate days. Wow. And, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm from Haiti, which, you know, um, so I was working with an organization. Well, I don't know if I want to name them, although I've talked about it publicly before, but I was working with an organization in the Haiti program. And the director was a Haitian American black woman like me. And we had, the, it was after the Haiti earthquake. So this is a nonprofit organization, pretty big, well-known one. And we were actually having a meeting because I don't know if you had known, we had the major earthquake that hit Haiti in 2010. Yeah. So we were talking and this organization, I think was probably one of the ones who got the most amount of money from the American public. And we were talking about how they haven't done much there. And it was in a meeting and we had a white man, a, a, he was the director of the international services in the meeting. And we were, they were talking about what are we going to, we don't have much to show the press. And mind you, I'm in the room my the director my boss is in the room and the director of the international services department goes well you know what Ugh, i'm not gonna worry about this because um you know who is the haitian community going to complain to the black caucus Ugh, we have a republican congress wow and i have to say it was probably my you know my, with i was within my few months there i when i left that meeting i was really upset oh i bet I, 
wow, like not only what he said, but that he was so casual mm. in like saying it and not even thinking that, you know, there are two Haitian black women in the room. And I didn't even, I, for me, I would, I didn't even realize it until yesterday that that was really white supremacy playing out right there. And totally, did you, did you have totally not even hearing our voices? Yeah. Did, did you, so sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt, but the, I mean, yeah. that was a very powerful story. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Did, did you and your boss at that point, did you, did you guys have a conversation at all about that? Well, the thing is, yeah, actually, we, you know, when we left, you know, we left because she, I walked out of the room before and then she left. And when she came and she came to my cubicle and she was like, how are you doing? And I was like, I, I, I can't believe this. Like, what? You know, um, and that was sort of like the extent of it. But it was just like, wow, like, you know. But it's just like, for me at the moment, I just thought, oh, wow, like that's rude. You know, you don't, you know, whatever. And, but it's, this is the thing. And I didn't even realize, but like yesterday when I was talking about it, I was like, this is exactly why you have to have this inclusion. And also people need to be, because it's like, how do you go and say something like that? Yeah. <laughs> you and know? I that I think the fact that like you, you didn't realize it then, right? Like you were processing it, but it was almost like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, that made me feel rude, but I don't know why. You know what I mean? I mean, I felt like I was upset as a Haitian, you know, as somebody who was Haitian, I was like upset. I thought it was disrespectful, but I didn't even see it as a way of like, I guess I kind of saw it, but I guess now there's a name for it, you know? Exactly. That's exactly what I, yep. For it. Because also, remember you and I, we talked about my background right. and where I grew up, you know? But it was just like really how you realize that some things have been playing out and we see it playing out in the online space and other places and really where people are not, um, you know, minorities' voices sometimes are just really being silenced. And I think that's a great story and it just your you're like, I'm sorry that you had to go through it. I don't mean like it's a great story. That, yeah. But it's a, it's a good story in that it is a great example of, so you had this, this um, discrimination happen to you. You had like this happen. And then you didn't, like you just said, I didn't know that it had a name, right? So it's now you're able to name it, but with that name, comes validation for you to go, no, that wasn't right. And this is why, and you know, other people are seeing, I think that, you know, that is, this is something why I was really, really um, drawn to you and what you've been talking about and how you've been using your voice, because this is something that needs to be talked about and no, it's not going to go under the rug anymore. And there's a lot of cul overall cultural shifts happening and they are absolutely now starting to play out in the workplace. Like, no, you're not allowed to talk like that. You're not allowed to disrespect another person. You're not allowed to devalue another person. Absolutely yes. not. And this is playing out now. So yes. Yeah. And when, and when you think about it, like what, you know, what we were talking, going back to what we're saying about this person saying that the culture needs to change is that, okay, now here you have a Haitian American black woman who's the director of the department of the Haiti program, but yet she's, she doesn't have a voice. Yeah. And other, and other Haitians who are working in the program, whether in Haiti or in Washington, this was in Washington, DC, we don't have a voice because the culture of the company is, is not giving voices to, 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 you know, to whatever, you know, people of color, women, you know, whatever. So that is the thing. But if, when you shift that culture, yeah. which is about the inclusion, that's when things like that, you know, well, I don't want to say they can't happen because, you know, sometimes things are going to happen, but at least, when the person says it, somebody's going to call them out on it. Like the way it's, it's not going to just, okay, you yeah. know, because the culture, because the organization's culture doesn't allow this, you know, is not for this, you know? Right. 
You absolutely, you hit it on the head. You know, the organization has to be intentional about programs um, that are diverse, that are inclusive, that, that, you know, those two things are on the forefront. It's not about being colorblind. You don't want to be colorblind, right? Mm -hmm. I think growing up when I was younger, I, I think that that was like something I heard a lot. It was like, oh no, you want to be colorblind. You know, yes. you, you want, and it's like, no. I thought so too, even for me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, I always remember thinking like, I was, uh, I'm very curious about other cultures and very, you know, and, um, and I remember when I, I went to Europe in 2009 and I got to, I mean, I went to, you know, England and France and Italy and Greece and Switzerland, so a bunch of different ones. And it was literally, it's eye opening. I mean, it's just eye opening how different, you know, cultures are and how, what you think in your little box, you know, <laughs> Like you need to expand your mind. You have to go out and it really does. It starts with an awareness. You have to be aware that other people think differently than you, that they were brought up differently than you, that, that it is okay to, you know, see a woman of color, see a man of color, see, we have to see our colors. We have to see our, our differing of values. We, that's the only way we're going to grow. It's not okay to be colorblind. That's the exact opposite of what we want. Yes. And, and you know what? And going back to what you talked about, why is the employee not showing up? Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that after this, then other things were happening. I would be in meetings and the way I would hear them talk about Haiti and not really doing, wanting to do, you know what? I would call out sometimes. I didn't feel empowered, which is one of the reasons why I ended up leaving. Yeah. I didn't feel empowered. I didn't feel like I actually moved to DC and got in this job and specifically the Haiti program because I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to, I, you know, and I was like, I call it like my light was not shining there. So, yeah. you know, employees don't show up, you know, many times because they're not being, they're not feeling that they're, they, that they matter there. You hit the nail on the head. Well, Absolutely. Which goes back to what you were saying about the wellness thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we, like my company. Well being, you know, well being. I think you, yeah. When I asked you, like, it's, it's called uh, employee well being, you know, we talked about it. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, when we're talking about wellness, like people in the wellness profession, I think see wellness and well being as interchangeable because what we're talking about is a whole person. We're talking about whole person education. We're talking about looking and valuing a person as a whole person, right? Not just like as a physical, right? Or, you know, um, or just mental. Or, I mean, we see there's all these different aspects in well being. There's so much. And, and this is what my company, and this is why I think this is a, this is a, new territory, I think, for a lot of um, wellness professionals is, do we need to be thinking about diversity? Do we need to be thinking about inclusivity? And I absolutely think it, we're, if we're not, then we're saying, oh, we just want to be colorblind. So we're going back to, we're going back somewhere where we're going, no, like when you're, when you are rolling out creating a wellness brand and really rolling out a well-being strategy in your organization, you need to be talking with all different kinds of departments. So the only way to do that, to really create a wellness brand and a wellness strategy is to, is to change the culture. You can't change the culture just by one program. It has to be, you know, including your, if you have a team of people who are, are you know, on a diversity team, including, you know, all having all different types of people on your, you know, your, your wellness uh, team. So your wellness coordinators, your wellness ambassadors, your wellness champions, listening to people, you know, really hearing what, what do you all have to say, you know, and implementing that. Totally. And, and you know what, I know, um, I know you've talked about you, I know you were talking at some point, we were saying that at some point you want to go global, like international. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things, like the other day, it's like I'm putting the pieces together. Yeah. Well, you and I have talked about where I'm headed in a way. Yeah. But I was like, this is what happens. Like, you know, people talk about white supremacy and how all of that stuff happening here in the States. But I was like, well, it's, go it's global because that's what happens in the, in the non-governmental world. 
like the international development world. Mm. What happens is that we're, you know, like if we take a country like Haiti, like we go to Haiti, we don't hear Haitian voices. Or we go to an, in a, any country in Africa or Latin America, we're not hearing the people's voices. What we're doing is we're just telling them this is how it's going to be done. There's no inclusion. So if you're really looking at it, this is a whole global thing. Like w the wellness, what you're doing, the well-being, it needs that inclusion, diversity, and equity. It needs to go all over because that's what's, you know, people's voices are not being heard. And actually, often it's being silenced. Yeah, yeah. And, and so people don't believe in what they don't create. So if they are not the stakeholders, if you are not if you roll out some kind of intervention or some program or, you know, anything to do with wellness and wellness strategy, and you're not including the key stakeholders, which are all the employees, right? Yes. So making sure that you are doing a represent representative um, sample of who it, who needs, who do we need to hear from? We need to hear from all the people, right? All these employees, we at least need to give them a platform to hear their voices. Mm -hmm. Then they're not, it, if you don't give that to them and you say, you know, well, we think you all need to lose weight or we think that you all need this program or that program, you know, that's why employee wellness in the past, the participation is, is low because it's the leadership saying, this is what we need because this is what the, this is what our risk factors or whatever are saying, but we're not listening to the employees and they don't, they don't want to participate in something they didn't help create. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer. Yeah. We and also too, and also too, you well, you know what it is? It's not even it's not only this the for no participation, but it's like you're not gonna get your end result, not only because they're not participating, but also it's like you didn't listen to them. It's like if I were to tell you, it's like you wanna you wanna help me with something, you're not getting my input, you just tell me here, like or do this, do that, and you're not hearing, but wait a minute, does this fit Najada's personality? You know, it's like we talk about like in the coaching world, like this yep. old cookie cutter thing. Yeah. That, so it's the same thing with, you know, with organizations and everything or when we're doing work in a certain place and then people wonder like, oh, wait, why is this, you know, we've been putting money in this country. We've been putting the, and we're not seeing what well, are you talking to the people? You know, sometimes people go and build things that you can't really maintain in a certain yeah. place or you know it's like you were to go and create this plan this program without getting the employees feedback and then you're not getting the result and you're like you know so that is the thing and then the other part of that is that you're not only not getting the result that you want but you're also and in your case i'm thinking back to the the situation that you had to endure which is now you've created even more of a barrier because now that person goes, I don't trust you. Oh, yeah, I, you, you know that. I, that is the thing. Like, I don't trust you because, like, for me, I have to say, I was, that was actually, like, that was the first. And there were other experiences after that. But I was like, whoa. Like, yeah. And once you diminish trust within an yes. employee – you diminish their well-being, you diminish the organizational health and well-being. So it is crucial that you turn it around, you start getting it right, you start listening and hearing and valuing uh, the voices of, of the employees and the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, totally. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important for, for, you know, and actually, you know, so yesterday, uh, what, I, what I was, uh, but definitely, I will let you know next time. <laughs> So what would you say, what has been something that was like a surprise for you, whether good or bad through working in, you know, in the corporate setting? Oh, that's a good question. What has been a surprise for me? Um, you know, the biggest surprise has been with wellness. I get to interact with a lot of employees. I get to interact with a lot of leadership um, and, and to me, leadership and employees, they're the same exact thing, but how much people open up to you, how much people really, really need um, to feel validated, to feel like, you know, they just want somebody to hear them 
to listen to them and to know, you know, I, I, I mean, I've heard, I've heard so many stories about family struggles and financial struggles and, you know, parents struggling with their kids or, um, uh, you know, employees struggling with taking care of their parents. I mean, you know, it's life. You hear about life. And um, I think it's just been really surprising in a, in a wonderful way. Mm-hmm. And I'm incredibly grateful that I get to, I get to hear all these stories and I get to see their struggles and I get to see their um, accomplishments. And I, you know, I just, I get to be with them on their journey. Yeah. I like that. You, you're really holding space for them. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a really real, I love that. I'm going to yeah, steal that. So that's what I'm hearing. That's what? I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I have to tell you, I love that word. I don't know. I don't know if I read, if I learned, where did I hear it first? If it was in my coaching training or something. And I often say, I think that's what we coaches do. You know what I mean? Um, is really, we, I mean, although we don't do it just as coaches, but yeah. And let me tell you, it's something that is so important. And you make it, and with that space, they feel safe. That, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's a safe place because what happens is even in our own personal lives, people, some, there are many times that people in our life, most people in our lives are not, they don't know how to hold space for you. Yeah. So which is why it doesn't make it safe, you know, which goes back again to what the word you used before about the trust. Yeah. yeah. Because what happens if I go and I open up and I get, you know, the way with the response that I get could either shut me down mm-hmm. and I don't trust you, or it really allows me to trust you and opens me up and, and then we can, you know, we can work together, reach out, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so tell me, what do you stand for in life and why? Mm. So I stand for, um, I have a special place in my heart for children. So I would absolutely say um, child rights, so, social injustices, 100%. Um, I stand for women. You know, I, I, I love what you do. I love what you do just having women feel validated in, in all of their, their ways, you know what I mean? Whether, whatever identity and role they want to fulfill, um, that's really what I want to stand for. I want to say, it's okay. It's okay to do you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause a lot of women, we struggle with that a lot, right? Especially women with children. Yeah. I mean, I have, the two, I have my two toddlers, so I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I have this business, which I call my other baby. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I have all these roles within that, you know, I'm a, I want to be engaged with my children and I really enjoy working. And, you know, where does that leave time with my husband and where does that leave time with my, my friends? And I mean, it is, it's a constant balancing act, you know, and, um, and it does, you do struggle with it. Totally, totally get that. What are your thoughts on life purpose? Do you, do you believe in that? And do you have one? And if you do, do you mind sharing it with us? So life purpose, um, you know, I've been thinking about this one a lot lately and just what, you know, what are we here for? I think everybody thinks that, right? Um, I absolutely know that my purpose here has something to do with bringing wellness to other people. Um, in whatever capacity that looks like. And I'm also like a messenger, if, if that makes sense. So I am, you know, uh, I use my voice. I have, I'm a speaker. Um, I love trainings. Um, so my, my purpose here is to be a messenger of wellness and well-being. And that can take many capacities. But I think in general, life purpose is to teach us to be in the moment, so that is absolutely something that I really, really struggle with, um, but that I am very intentional with. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Like, what, what, do you mind sharing a little bit about struggling with being in the moment, expanding on that for us? Yeah. So because I have so much going on, um, you know, I'm always thinking, okay, well, this is what I want to do and, and I'll be happy when I get here and um, I've been reading um, a bunch of books lately, but um, one of them is called Bliss More, and it is—it mm. uh, just came out. It's by Light Watkins, and it is about 
um, meditation like made easy, if you think about it that way. Okay, okay. So I've been trying to, I know that you meditate and I've been yeah. trying to get back into it. I feel like I'm mindful, but I know that my mindfulness will be like totally, uh, yeah. you know, up level if I, if I do me more meditation. So I, I meditate, but not consistently right now. Um, and then the other one that I'm, I'm reading that I just got, I'm really excited about it. It's called living, um, living Buddha, living Christ. Mm, okay. So it's really, it's a really interesting, um, it's by a Buddhist monk and okay. he also talks about Christianity. So I was raised as a Catholic. So, um, and to me, it's always been this struggle, you know, um, but with life purpose and, and with finding meaning in that type of thing and being in the moment, that's all kind of together because it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. If you can, if you can just look within and just settle your mind, that's where happiness happens. It's not an external cue. Totally. I totally get that. So what would you say, what do you believe the world needs more of and why? Hi, absolutely. One, you can't go wrong with love and compassion. Those, and I, I think more than ever right now, I know. We, we need some love and some com compassion. Just, and I, I think this really goes back to what we were talking about today. And the compassion is, it's just understanding that somebody else's view. It's understanding that it's not a right or wrong thing. It's not a yes or no. It's, you know, it's, it's not black or white. It's, there is a lot of gray and getting into that space that you call it <laughs> and settling into that space, you know, that's where compassion comes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I actually do. I, I really, <laughs> I have um, some people that I, you know, you always have people that you struggle with, right. That you just are like, they just do not get it. Like <laughs> they don't get it. And um, I've had a, a recent uh, person that has been not getting, I mean, it's just, it's been a, it's been a challenge with, with her <laughs> specifically. And so every time I have had, she's consuming a lot of my energy and she, and I, it's becoming negative energy. Mm. And so what I've been doing is every single time, you know, she comes into my head and, and then you go through kind of like a spiel, you know, you'll go through, Oh, well, I'm going to say this to her next time. And you know, I go stop bless her. And I send a blessing. And so it's really retraining my brain to go, no, like what I put off, what I put off, I want to be what I get back. I want it to be a high vibration that I'm sending out. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It is hard. <laughs> it is hard, especially since what you know what it is. She's one of your teachers for sure. I know that's how I see these people in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you because, do, you look because at, because actually that's, that's where you get to practice with. Yeah. And you, right. So you look at, you're like, what am I supposed to learn from this? And I'll have a conversation, you know, with God and I'll be like, all right, can this learning like take quick, can it be quicker? <laughs> no, I totally get you. Totally get you. Wow. This was really great. Thank you so much, Teresa. What would you say for a final word? What would you want to say? Anything? It could be um, about maybe people who are thinking about go going into corporate or maybe just whatever it is that you feel that call to share with my audience before we wrap up? Yeah. You know, I would say be open-minded. So 100% just be open-minded and never doubt that there are opportunities available to you. I love that. Yeah. I really, really love that. And I have to say, I really love the post you did the other day on Facebook and you talked about how you've been really able to build this business and this life that really like fits you and really that you love, you know? Yeah. And it hasn't been a struggle. So, I mean, I, like there are struggles there, you know, I think, yeah, I think sometimes just because I, you know, it's, you feel something, you feel what you're being called to do and it's, it's like nothing, it doesn't matter how many obstacles or whatever you face, you just, you continue to be true to that inner voice and you know, you'll get there. Totally, totally. And you know what, and the thing is that we also learn from the struggles, you yeah. know? Oh yeah. Like, totally, totally agree with you. And I have to say, that's one of the things, like I really enjoy your post because 
you even share some vulnerable stuff as well. You, you are vulnerable, you know, you're not just sharing the happy and good stuff. You're also being vulnerable. So I, I really love that. You know, for me, that's my, <laughs> yeah. And because I that's mean, I, life, you know, well, it's who we are. And it's like, you know, I think we've gotten away from that, that we, we aren't supposed to be real people with like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like we aren't supposed to, to do this or do that. We're, you know, we're supposed to be all good. No, it's, I mean, that's not who we are as humans. Totally. Totally. That's why we, you know, I often say like, if you, when you show you're human, you show that you've made mistakes, you show that you've struggled, you might be currently struggling with something. So it's like all normal, you know? So, yeah. wow. Wow, this was really great. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed it. So tell, oh, wait, I just realized I want you to tell people, you want to share a little bit more about you and where they can connect with you. Obviously, everything will be below the video on my website. You'll see her, her website, her social media pages where you can connect with Teresa. And if you're listening to us through Apple Podcasts, um, which was known as iTunes. If you visit, you know, visit my website, www.lovelikecoaching.com and you'll be able to get her, you know, see her information. But if you want to share a little bit more about you and give them your information as well. Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah. The best way to reach me is just to go to the, our website. So it's cpwellnessconsultants.com. Um, I'm also big on LinkedIn. So Teresa Prostocki, I don't know if anybody can spell that, but it's P-R-Z-E-T-O-C-K-I. Um, and then, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I'm, I'm on all of them. Great. Yes. And obviously don't worry about spelling her name. If you go <laughs> on my website, you'll find the correct spelling <laughs> and all the links to where you can connect with her. Wow. So if you, we'd love to hear from you, give us some feedback. If you are watching through on my website or through YouTube, leave us a comment. If you are listening to us to apple podcast we would really appreciate leave us a feedback leave us a review no matter what rate us subscribe if you enjoy this and so you can know when new episodes are available um they're available every other week although i'm going to be taking a short break this summer and also um if you are visiting if you're on my website and you want to get this in your inbox every time a new episode is, is you know get those twice a month you get a new episode. If you subscribe to my email list below, you'll see a box, put your name and email address and go ahead and subscribe. And especially if you're an ambitious and purpose driven women, and you really are all about wanting to make an impact in the world. And once you subscribe to my email list, you'll also get my free gift, which is an audio of it's my seven questions to reconnect with yourself and align with your mission and vision. And it's very much linked to also you know, it's going to help you use your voice because you'll know what you want to talk about. These are not questions that I just created. I actually have used them myself. So once you confirm your subscription to my email list, you'll get my free gift and you'll also get weekly tips and inspiration from me. So, and also leave us a comment on the, below the video, because we'd love to hear from you. And thank you again, Teresa. And thank you everyone who joined us, everyone who listened to us and watched us today. Until next time, love and light. Bye.